fell. I am sorry. For what? For my father bringing you here. He meant to please me, but I never wanted you taken from your lake. She searched her mind for something to say to him, to ease his loneliness. It did not occur to her to pity a slave, but Vel seemed less a slave than a prisoner. He always had the look of wearing a cage around his shoulders. He seemed to be straining against invisible wires. I was watching the dragonfly, she said, pointing to the cyclamen. Earth and heaven. He has the best of both. Earth is best, said Vel. He pronounced it Uth. Quick as a cat, he caught the insect between his fingers and held him to Tanaquil as if he wished to make her a present. She had hunted dragonflies as a child. She bent her fingers to grasp the black, stiff body and spare the fragile wings. But Vel, as if he were shelling beans, snapped the body, peeled off the wings, and presented the pathetic remnants to Tanaquil in his open palm. Earth is best, he said. Hot ashes of anger exploded in her brain. She struck his hand and sent the fragments fluttering to the ground. Why did you do it? she cried. Her outburst seemed to surprise him. Perhaps he had grown accustomed to her lethargy. I do not know, he shrugged. I meant to give him to you, unbroken. But you angered me. But how? She almost wanted him to accuse her of slights and insults, and thus to justify his cruelty. You never look at me. I wanted to shake your dream. But I need my dream, she gasped. Without it, I feel... naked. She did not see him move, or rather, she felt before she saw him. The coppery hardness of his mouth and body, the webbed toes snaking around her ankles, capturing her like tendrils of seaweed. Except for his toes, there seemed no softness anywhere in that slender, boyish body. Only a bruising, implacable hardness. And yet she desired him. Words, images, glimpses out of her past, ignored at the time, returned to her now with bruising immediacy. The songs of the Fessenine singers, those bawdy players who traveled from town to town and sang the infidelities of the gods. The harvest festival of Liber, the earth god, when a giant phallus was wreathed with ivy and carried in a procession through the streets the look on the face of a slave girl watching a naked boy as he worked in the fields. She had listened and seen, but, lost in her dream, she had failed to understand. Through the frank sexuality which permeated all phases of Etruscan life, the home, the theatre, the circus, and the countryside, she had moved with the open but sightless eyes of a sleep-walking child. The musky scent of him, acrid and sweet at once, assailed her nostrils and seemed to course through her blood like the hot borax hurled from the earth in the gorges near the coast. Her gentleness cried that he was hard and cruel, but her body solicited his cruelty. Incredibly, it was her brother who saved her. When Vel had entered the garden, he had seemed to be Aulus, returned from the nether lands, now he seemed to her a caricature, a desecrating mockery of the boy she had loved. With a strength belied by the soft roundness of her limbs, she flung him away from her, or rather, flung herself out of his arms and toward the rock which enclosed the grotto. Stumbling backwards, trampling poppies under her sandals, falling at last to her knees, ready to fend him off with upraised fists. He stood above her, hands on his hips, laughing. A phallic demon, proud of his manhood. You thought I was only a child, he said. No, she said. I thought you were a cat. <laughs>